are so glad that you're here. At Tamak of Praise, our mission is to turn the hearts of the people in the community back to God, to reclaim those who have fallen by the wayside, and to win the lost to Christ. Each service has been designed with you in mind. Stay tuned for a word from Bible teacher, Dario Melton. Good evening. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited that you are here with us tonight as we dive deeper inside of the word of the Lord. It is in his word where we find life and it's his word where we find liberty. If you will, join me now in the word of prayer and we'll go directly into our scripture tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you allowed us again to come into this place called Sanctuary. That even as we gather, Father, in our different locations, we thank you that you're omnipresent, that you're there. Tonight we gather, we lay aside every sin and every weight which so easily beset us, and we look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let our hearts be receptive tonight. Let our ears be open that we may hear what you're saying to us through your word. We pray that every word that is other, God, it would be guided by the power of your Holy Spirit. Be with us now in this moment. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Again, I'm so excited that you are here. We're in our series, Upgrading Your Lifestyle. It's been a blast this year. We started back in January, and it's my hope and my prayer that you have been growing in the Lord, that your relationship with God has become stronger that you are discovering more about who you have been created to be, that there is destiny on your life, that you got purpose on your life. I can't stop saying it, that, that God has plans for you, for you to be able to go out and become the person whom he has predestined you to be. So it's my hope and prayer that through these times together and these studies together, that you are seeing yourself in a different light, that you are seeing yourself through the eyes of God. Well, tonight we're in Genesis chapter 32. When Genesis chapter 32, um, join me there, if you will, and we will focus on verses 22 through verses 28. You will find there these words. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford of Jabuk. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. 
Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I would not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. But Israel, for you have struggled with God and with man and have prevailed. Tonight, I want to study with you from the thought, running and fighting. It's in one of my, my favorite uh, movies. It's a classic huh? where you will find the gentleman by the name Tom Hanks uh, who portrays the character Forrest Gump. Forrest says that day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road. And when I got there, I thought maybe I'll run to the end of the town. And when I got there, I thought maybe I'll just run all the way across Greensboro County. And I figured since I run this far, maybe I'll just run across the great state of Alabama. And that's what I did. I ran clear across Alabama for no particular reason. I just kept on going and I ran clear to the ocean. And when I got there, I figured since I gone this far, I might as well turn around and just keep on going. When I got to another ocean, I figured since I've gotten this far, I might as well just turn back, keep right on going. Forrest Gump is still running after he started, catch this, three years ago for no special reason as they run on a desert road with the Monument Valley behind him, Forrest suddenly stops running. He turns around and says that he is tired and he is going home now. He is tired and he is going home home. Now, when we come to our text tonight, we don't find Forrest, but we find Jacob, who his entire life, he's been running. He was a man on the run. When we encountered Jacob, he had lied to his Daddy, he had manipulated his brother and his father and his entire life since he's been born. Jacob's been running from who God has purposed him to be. It's even when we see Jacob is fighting for or manipulating people for a birthright. But even before he was born, the Lord has spoken to his mother that there was promise on his life. So he's always on the run. And when he manipulates his brother and steals the birthright, and then he manipulates and lies to his father, Jacob is sent back to Haran, the place where Abraham is called from. And now he is running from his brother Esau. Jacob is always on the run. He's on the run from God, and when he's on the run from God, now he's on the run from other people. Are you breathing? Are you with me tonight? Um, he's on the run from other people. He stole his brother's birthright. He stole the blessing while his daddy was on his deathbed because he was a robber and he was a thief. So Jacob is always on the run. And his brother Esau had sworn that when his daddy Isaac 
was no longer with them that he was going to kill Jacob. So Jacob is on the run for his life, not knowing what the future holds. So he's running for his life. Brothers and sisters tonight, as we look at this text, we see Jacob is also running from himself. He's running from himself, and there's no coincidence uh, that he is running from himself because his, uh, con his conscience won't allow him to hide anywhere. That in one sense, justice condemned him, and but on the other hand, his conscience keep reminding him um, of who he is. And so he is running his entire life. Those are the three things I want you to remember. He's running from God, he's running from other people, and he's running from himself. But I want to say, you, say to you tonight, as we dive into this study together, Jacob is not the only one who runs from God. Jacob is not the only one who runs from people. Jacob is not the only one who's running for himself because many of us find ourselves uh, in the same situation as Jacob. We may have not deceived anyone, but we're running. We may have never, not have lied to anyone, but we're running, running from whom we have been predestined and created to be. Oftentimes when people are deceiving others and when they are lying to others, when they are manipulating the situation, when they had to compromise, that's the word, when they have to compromise their integrity and compromise who they are, it is only a sign that they are running from something. Because listen, brother and sister, young man, young lady, mother, father, when you know who you are. Oh, I hope you are hearing this. When you know who you are, you will not compromise yourself. And a lot of people are in compromising situations because they don't know who they are. And when you know who you are, that they can't buy you, they, they can't trick you, they can't offer you enough, they can't swindle you, they can't they, they can't pull you over to their side. You don't choose sides when you know who you are. Jacob is on the run because he don't know who he are, who he is, whether he don't know who he is. And maybe you on the run tonight because you don't know who you are, that you're going from place to place, that you're going from friendship to friendship, from relationship to relationship. You can't make up your mind what you want to do because you're on the run, that you are literally running from, there it is, either God, people, or yourself. But what I've learned is oftentimes, if you're not running from God, you won't have to run from the others. Are you breathing? If you're not running from God, you will not have to run from people, nor will you have to run from yourself. Because when you know God, you'll know who you are. Let me say this this way. You can only know who you are when you get to know who he, who he is. Because it's in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your very being. If you don't know who he is, you won't know who you are. Oh, I hope you are taking this in tonight. Jacob is on the run because all of these years... He's been working for his father-in-law, Laban, and Jacob really don't know who he is. Because what happens, Jacob goes to his father-in-law's place or to his, his, his parents' uh, place, to the place of Haran, and he is tricked by his father-in-law. You know the story. He ends up marrying Leah first because she's the, elders, the elder daughter, and then he married Rachel second. He was tricked by his own father-in-law. And then we learned that the same seed that he sowed in his family, now Jacob is now reaping what he had done to somebody else. Oftentimes, it's not the devil that's causing us to run. It's not the devil that's causing the confusion. Oftentimes, we are reaping, help me Lord, the, the seeds that we have sown. Oh, breathe in for a moment. Think about that. It's not the devil all the time who's fighting us. Oftentimes, we are reaping the seeds that we have sown. We are reaping a harvest of seeds that we are placed in the ground. And here's Jacob is now, who's been working for his father-in-law for 20 years. 
For 20 years, he is working with his father-in-law, but in his conscience, he is reminded uh, that he needs to go back to the place of promise. Let's go. You ready to take off tonight? He needs to go back to the place of promise. Uh, I want you to remember, Jacob left Canaan. He didn't leave Haran. He left Canaan to go to Haran. Canaan is the promised place where God has promised his father, his grandfather Abraham. So Jacob is in the promise. Oh, I'm a, I'm trying to keep my cool tonight, huh? but he can't enjoy the promise. Oh, help me, Lord, huh? because he don't know who he is. Ah, help me. Now, when you don't know who you are, you can be living in the promise and can't even recognize it because you don't know who you are. But when you know who you are and who you are, you're able to walk into the full promise that God has prepared for you. So Jacob is inside of the promised land when we first encounter him. He's in the place of promise, but he's not able to function in promise because he is running from God and he is running from himself. Mm. He is running from God and he is running from himself. And anytime you don't want relationship with God, and anytime you are running from yourself, you're never able to recognize that you can be in the promised place. You can also fail to be able to live out the life inside of the promised place. So he leaves the promised place and goes to a place where he he has to work for somebody else uh, for 20 years. Uh, but even though he is working for other folks, uh, he has so much promise on his life, uh, so much destiny on his life. Uh, God allowed him to prosper even when he went in the promised land. A sign of the promise on your life uh, is no matter where you go, no matter who you encounter, that you still see God is making things work together for your good. Uh, regardless of if they try to pay you less money, it works together for your good. Regardless of if they try to scheme you and get over you, God still make it work together for your good. Uh, I wish you all a high five yourself tonight and say he is making it work together for my Good. So he's on the run. He's left Canaan. And when he left Canaan, remember, in Genesis 28, God shows up to him. When God shows up to him, he sees God in a dream. And God says to him, he doesn't rebuke him for how he is behaving, for him running for himself. God speaks to him, here it is, about the promise that he has on his life. That's what I love so much about God. God don't remind us, or doesn't remind us of how far we have fallen. God doesn't remind us of the sin that we've committed. God reminds us of the promise that he has for your life. Uh, God is more concerned about executing the promise in your life because when you see the promise, You'll lay aside every sin. Uh, you'll lay aside every weight with so easy to see, see you when you see the promise. God shows up to him in Genesis 28 and he sees him in his dreams. In the wrong place, God shows up to him and he says to him in his dreams, I'm going to bless you as far as the east is from the west and the north is from the south. In other words, Jacob, you're on the run from me, but I got good news for you. I want to expand you. You're on the run, and oftentimes when you are running, it is a sign you got greatness or expansion inside of you. That God wants to expand you from center to circumference for you to become all that he has predestined you to become. I wish you would say that to yourself tonight, that you got destiny on your life. That you're not any kind of Tom, Dick, or Harry, that you just showed up on the scene. But when you showed up on the scene, you showed up. As a person with destiny. Yeah, you may not look the role right now. You might even act like the role right now, but the very fiber of your being has destiny inside of it. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I know God has created you with destiny and purpose that you're not an accident, that you didn't stumble into this place. Even tonight, you didn't just stumble in onto this broadcast, but you're here as a reminder that you have destiny on your life. And so he's on the run from God. 
He's on the run now from Esau. And he's on the run for himself. And the Bible says uh, he is running from Esau. Here it is. Because he's afraid. We're looking at a fight, a fight situation. Jacob wasn't a fighter. The Bible says when he left home, he was a deceiver. When he left home, he often deceived and tricked folks. That's how he made his way through life. He didn't know how to fight for stuff. He didn't know how to go out there with all his might and power. He was always deceiving and taking stuff out of them. If you had something, Jacob can get it off here. He was a deceiver. He left home as a deceiver, someone who would not fight for his promise, who would not fight for his destiny. He goes and works for his father-in-law, Laban, and now he gives room that his brother-in-laws are upset with him because he's been blessed uh, working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. He's been blessed working for somebody else uh, and now he's on the run because his father-in-law wants to wants to deal with him uh, because he feels like Jacob has stolen his blessings. Are you breathing tonight? So what we know about Jacob, anytime there are problems in the family, Jacob likes to run. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says here in Genesis 32 and in verse 22 that he sent his wives. So he took his two wives and his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford. He took them and sent them over the brook ahead of him and sent over what he had. See, when you're not a fighter, you always send messengers before you because what, what, what God has for your life, nobody's going to be able to take the message for you. You're going to have to deal with this all by yourself. I wish you all to receive that tonight. For the things that God has planned and prepared for your life, you're going to have to deal with it by yourself. There are some things that others can't help you with. Huh? You're going to have to come to a place in your life huh, where you're going to have to face what you've been running. Jacob had been running from God, and the Bible says, verse 24, Genesis chapter 32, then Jacob was left alone. He was left alone. And the last time we saw Jacob alone is in Genesis chapter 28, when he is running from Esau. God shows up to him. And Jacob wakes up and says, surely the Lord is in this hot place. I'm going to call this the house of God. I'm going to call it Bethel. He notices God when he's on the run, when he's running from fear. Then he's now running from Esau. Well, he's running now for Laban and his father-in-law, and he is left alone. There's some things that you won't discover until you are by yourself. It's not about how many friends you have. It's not about how many folks you're rolling with. There's some things God will only give to you when you are by yourself because there's too much noise in your ear. You can't hear God right when everyone else is telling you how to think, how to feel, telling you how to be you. You can't hear God right. And so God will allow for a moment and time time to come where you are by yourself. And maybe you're in that place tonight where you are by yourself. And maybe you're in that place where you are running from family. You can't deal with the family because of what happened in the family and you are by yourself. And the Bible says, and a man showed up. And that man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. When he was by himself, the angel showed up and wrestled with him. He, 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 he ambushed him when he was by himself. Now, it's a scary thought to think that God who is omniscient, God who is omnipotent, who is all-powerful and all-knowing uh, will ambush somebody. 
that God ambushes this man. When he ran from the promised land, he was running from God, but God wasn't willing to let him run anymore. God shows up to him when he's by himself. It's not a crowd. It's not a multitude. God shows up and ambush him. And God shows up to him. And what we quickly learn about Jacob, all his life he's been running. But that came a point in time in his life and it will come in our lives if it hasn't already come and it will continually come. Well, we have to make up a decision. We're either going to keep running or we're going to start fighting. The Bible says that the man who wrestled with him until the breaking of day all night long, they were going back and forth. It was an ultimate event, an extreme event. It was a UFC event. They was working all night long. There was sweat in a dry place. Um, there was blood in a dry place. It wasn't a cute mess. They was fighting all night long. Jacob, God was training him and preparing him that Jacob, if you're going to become all that you're going to become that I predestined you to be, you got to get to a place in your life life, and I'm saying this to you, where you are willing to fight. You, the promise is not going to come to you easy. The upgrade is not going to come to you easy, but you have to make up in your mind that if it's worth having, it's worth fighting for. If it's worth going out of, it's worth fighting for. That you have to come to a place in your mind where you have your center of gravity that say, you know what? I'm willing to fight for this because whatever you is, is whatever you're willing to fight for, yes, Yes, Lord, that God is willing to give to you. He is fighting with this man all night long to the breaking of day. What type of fight this must have been? Um, I've seen heavyweights go um, 10 rounds, 12 rounds, and they're exhausted. Uh, but they went all night long until the sun was coming up. And the Bible says, now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, uh, this is the man that showed up to say, I can't beat this trickster. I can't beat this deceiver. I can't pin him down. Uh, he said, listen, he, the Bible said he touched up. Uh, the socket of his hip. Now, don't let the familiarity of this story make you miss what is happening here in this place. Uh, Jacob has been on the run now all of his life. Who has he been running from? He's been running from God. He's been running from his family, and he's been running from himself. The, the angel is wrestling with him. The man is wrestling with him. And the Bible says when he could not prevail against Jacob, uh, that he reached out and touched his socket of his hip. Don't let that, don't, don't miss that again. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. I want you to notice something right there. Jacob has experienced a wound. Ah, oh God, but he's still fighting. Jacob has has experienced injury, but he didn't let the injury um, uh, stop him from fighting. It's there in your text. Huh? He is fighting and he is fighting uh, and he touched his hip side, right? Huh? The reason the angel touches Jacob's hip side huh, is why you got it. He's been on the run. Um, you can't run right when you're crippled. Ah, you can't run right when you're injured and he's injured and now he can't run right. Huh? God allows things to happen to our life. Paul said it this way. I had this thorn in my side huh, that I wouldn't boast of myself, that I wouldn't come more high. Ali did not thought. Uh, he said that God would give us something um, to, to slow us down. Or God would give us something to remind us uh, of, of who we've been or where we've been. Uh, and he touched his hip socket. Uh, why? Because you can't run cripple. Uh, uh, I hear that. You can't run cripple. Uh, God touched his hip. Uh, to make him come to a decision. You can't keep running. You got to fight. And yes, when you're fighting, there will be wounds. Uh, there will be injuries. But you don't stop fighting because you've been wounded. Who cares? You've just been hurt one time. Uh, yeah, they walked out on you. You talked about you. They dogged you. They, they didn't even call you a child of God. Um, but yeah, and it hurt you. But that don't mean you throw in the tower. Listen, you got to get back in the ring and start fighting the fight of life. Um, God has great things prepared for you. 
if you would get in the ring and fight. Rocky told us he didn't hear no bell. And I'm like, Rocky, I didn't hear no bell. So why you stop fighting? You got to fight. You can't keep running. You got to fight. That comes a place in your Christian journey when you're walking with God that you got to fight. Jesus said it this way. He says, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent, but the violent get up and do what? Take it by force. You got to get to a point in your life where you got to fight. You got to fight. And he's wrestling. And the angel said to Jacob, that you're no longer running, you're fighting now, and you are struggling with me. He said, I need you to let me go. Do you see that? Uh, Jacob is not running from this man. He ran from Esau. He ran from Laban, his father-in-law. But when this stranger shows up that he don't know who it is, uh, Jacob is willing to fight for it. Notice he was running from family. I'm trying to help us tonight. Huh? But when this unknown person shows up, uh, he was willing to fight for it. Uh, he was willing to fight for it. He said, let me go that for the daybreak, the sun is coming up. But Jacob said to the angel, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. Don't don't let those words <laughs> skip over your head. Jacob, we thought you had the birthright. We thought you had swindled and you had manipulated your way to get Esau's birthright. We thought that when you was in Lebanon that you already had cattle that you produced when you was working for somebody else. And you mean to tell me, Jacob, you got all of this stuff. Ah, I'm trying not to run out of the room tonight. You got all of this stuff, Jacob, and you still don't feel blessed. Ah, so you, you got all of this stuff. You got your wife, you got your children, you got all this wealth. And Jacob, you are saying to us in this text, huh? you are wrestling with this man. You're wrestling with this angel and say, I got all of this stuff, but I know it's still more to me. I don't feel blessed. I, I, I got all of this support and I got all of these friends. Friends. I got all of this stuff uh, inside of my house, but 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 I still don't feel blessed. I, I, I got all of this stuff going for me. People think that I'm very popular. I got all of this stuff going for me, but 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 I don't feel like I'm blessed. And I'm not going to let you go because I don't like how I feel. Ah, God, help me tonight. I, I can't let you go because I don't like how I feel feel, Lord, huh? that I know that I'm not really blessed. I got the stuff and folks think I'm blessed, but I'm really not blessed. Huh? It looks like I'm blessed, but I'm really not blessed. Huh? It looks like I got it together, but I really don't have it have it all together. They assume I got it together because I have to act the role. And if I don't act the role, the church folks going to say that I'm not real. If I don't act the role, the church folks going to think I don't have a relationship with you. So all of these years, these 20 some years, I've been acting the role. They thought I had the birthright, huh? but God, I don't feel like I'm blessed. Here uh, yeah, it is in the text. Huh? The angel said to him, Jacob, you're right. You don't feel like you're blessed. So tell me, Al Jacob, then what is your name? In other words, how have you been operating? You have stuff, but how did you get it, Jacob? Uh, you got stuff, but how did you get? How have you been operating? What is your origin? Who 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 you really are? Because because the, the name reveals what you've been doing. Huh? Who you are? Jake. To talk to what's your name? God is omniscient and God knows everything. Huh? But He has in this particular moment beginning to ask Jacob, "I don't know what's your name, Jacob." And Jacob said, "My name is Jacob." The angel spoke and said, your name shall no longer be called deceiver, trickster, manipulator, but Israel, for you have struggled, you have fought with God. I'm changing your name to 
spider. That Jacob, huh? You can't go back and meet your brother scared. You can't go back to your family scared because if you keep running, Jacob, I would never be able to produce in your life what I have planned for you. I hope you'll listen tonight. If you're going to upgrade your lifestyle, if you're going to walk into greatness, you got to stop running from the folks who you're supposed to be a part of. It's no accident that you was born into the family that you were in. It's not a coincidence that they are part of who you are. God says to Jacob, in order for you to go back to Esau, you can't go back with that timidity spirit uh, that you always want to run. Uh, but I need you to go back, here it is, uh, with strength under control. Ah, that's it. I need you to go back with strength under control. Now you learn how to fight, but I don't want you to fight them uh, with, your, with your natural power, but I want you to walk around with a certain level of confidence uh, because they can tell, Jacob, that you're different how you carry yourself. Nobody is moved by someone who is walking in timidity, who's afraid and who's quick to run. But Jacob, when you see your brother Esau, you're going to be able to deal with him differently, not to fight him, but you're going to have confidence to be able to love him. That's why you can love your enemies, those who despitefully use you, those who persecute you, because you are walking in the fighter strength, because you realize it's not that you don't have the ability to return the favor, but you are strength under control. And that's my prayer for you. While you're upgrading your life, that with all the strength and all the fight that you have, that you don't be a wild fighter, but you have strength under control, because the devil knows if you fight wild, you'll get knocked out, huh? but you got to have strength under control. And God said to him, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but your name going to be called Israel, for you have struggled furious with God and with men. But not only did you struggle, you won. <laughs> did you hear that? Not only did you struggle with life, huh? you won. Jacob is still living and God has already declared he's a winner. What does that say about you? That because you got promise on your life, you don't have to keep running. You already won. You don't have to keep wondering if it's going to work out. You don't have to keep wondering about the setbacks, the down times. You have already been declared a winner. Jacob said, then tell me your name, I pray. God said, it doesn't matter what my name is. Why are you asking my name? And then Jacob said to himself at the end of the chapter, he said, I'm going to call this place Pania, for I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. In Genesis chapter 28, and we're moving to our conclusion. We got to get up out of here. In Genesis chapter 28, he sees God in a dream. And now in Genesis chapter 32, he's seen God face to face. He's getting closer to God. And now he sees him. Face to face. God could have wrestled with him in Genesis 28 when he was on the run the first time. But now he's going back oh, to the place of promise. God said, I want you to walk in and start running. You got to be able to walk through the promise and enjoy it. Because if you're running, you move too quick. You need to walk through the promise and enjoy it. I need you to be ready to go back to the promised place. Canaan, the place of promise. Not running this time. But going back with confidence, they, they would call it arrogant or arrogance. I call it struggling with God. I call it seeing God face to face because when you see him for who he is, oh, help me, Paul. Uh, then we'll see ourselves for who we are, for the are. Now we see darkly in the glass. We see dimly. We don't fully understand who we are. But when we see him face to face, ah, I'm trying not to run out this place, uh, then we will be known in full that when we when we see him face to face, and Jacob have seen him face to face, uh, and they would call it arrogance. Uh, we call it knowing God. Because when you know God, you don't let people talk you down about who you are. When you know 
God. You don't have to keep hiding your faith and running from people because they don't believe the way that you believe. Uh, that you don't have to start acting like them and compromising yourself. Uh, you, when you know God, when you see God face to face, and that's my prayer tonight, uh, that, if, that if you're in that place by yourself and you're still running from stuff and that you're still compromising, that God will have an encounter with you that you will see him face to face. Uh, I tell you, God loves you. He's not trying to kill you. He's trying to bring out that greatness inside of you. He's trying to get you to develop into the person you've been called to be. That if it take him wrestling with you, if it take him uh, struggling with you, God could have killed him while he was wrestling him. God wasn't there to kill him. God was in there to get him to see who he is. Uh, and maybe many of the struggles that you're having in life right now is not to take you out. It's only to get you to see who you are. And I come tonight to tell you that you are the head and not the tail. That you are above only and never beneath. Huh? That you are blessed going out and you're blessed coming in. It's not cliche. I mean it. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and never beneath. You are blessed going out and coming in. Why? Because you are a blessing. Jacob said, I don't feel blessed. God said, you won't feel blessed until you see me face to face and you know who you are. I got to get up out of here. We're out of time, but we're never out of grace. I, I'm trying to keep my cool, huh? Because you got to know who you are. That devil will play tricks on you your entire life to try to get you to not live into the full potential of who you are. But we, sir, know this on the evil spirit tonight and we say to God for you will live and for you will die will die blessed be the name of the Lord my brothers and sisters God has greatness in your life and greatness on your life there's a plan for your life there's a promise for your life and you have been predestined and there's a promise for you if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, won't you simply pray these words with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. God, I've been on the run. I've been running from you. I ran from people. And I've even run from myself. But you said if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then I shall be saved. Lord, I confess you now and ask you to be my personal savior from this day forth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me encourage you to get inside of a church home that will help you to walk inside the kingdom of God. Uh, that we are at the door, let's walk now into the kingdom. For everyone else, I'm gonna ask you to give your tithe, to sow seed, the Bible, and I stress this, the Bible says you are never to come before the Lord eh? empty-handed. They were always to bring a gift unto the king. Tonight, make sure that you sow that seed. Make sure you return your tithe. Make sure you give that offering. For it is he who has given you the power to give the wealth that he may establish his covenant with you here on the earth. Amen. Now, as we leave this place, but never God's grace, it is my hope and my prayer that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And remember that there is victory in your praise. <laughs>